joining us. This is Paul Wilson. Chris Emke. Thank you for listening. Uh, guys, today on the show, of course, we are going to get to our special guest from Peak, or you might know him as World Industries. They're the manufacturers of products like Def Blue or uh, Peak Coolant. Um, so we have some really exciting stuff to talk about there. But first, Chris, we always start off talking about calibrated power. And I know at some point people are just like, we get it. Paul, Chris, you guys work at Calibrated Power. I thought today we would let one of our fans uh, do the talking for us. Absolutely. Let's run the tape. My name is uh, Matthew Scarpelli. This past summer, I bought an upgraded turbo for my 2018 Cummins. And um, I'll be honest, after spending a little over $5,000 that I put in it, um, it turned out that it was lackluster at best. Um, Now, I commute with my truck uh, daily. I tow with it. I expect things from it. I really need it to run right. So what I did is after working with my uh, local diesel performance shop, DG's ProTech, they were actually able to um, work with calibrated power solutions to provide me with a custom tune. I believe it was uh, Anthony at Calibrated Power. He helped my shop to create that custom tune revision that basically, I think it plays with the VGT to help uh, spool the turbo like, like a smaller turbo during takeoff and then still let it run free once it has enough boost built. Now, before this uh, custom calibrated powers tune, the truck would constantly downshift, uh, drop speed up hills, and it just it felt short on power. But now, this thing kills anything its way. I learned that the turbo upgrade was really just about useless without good tuning. And uh, you can get your emissions equipped custom tuning from Calibrated Power by calling 815-568-7920 today. All right. And so now that we're back, uh, I always think that's a really cool story, guys, uh, of somebody who went through having tuning, getting a turbo upgrade, expecting a lot because it's a pretty large investment on that truck, uh, and then finding out it was just woes and disappointment so and then to have tuning come in and really step up and be able to bring that back to life i think it's just a really really clear outline of of how it works right yeah i mean well you think about it you see all the advertising online and you know all the different turbo manufacturers out there they always talk about what kind of power potential the turbocharger can can achieve well it's a kind of of a misperception because you think, okay, well, if I bolt this turbo on my truck or, you know, it's not just turbo upgrades. It's a lot of upgrades. I bolt this on my truck. I'm going to get the power. (laughs) And they don't realize that there's more to it. You got to tune the vehicle for that. You have to be able to turn up the fueling to match the ability of what the turbocharger can do in providing air to make that possible. Um, everything's got to work together. You know, everything's kind of a, a puzzle, so to speak. So, you know, it's nice to have a success story like that where we were able to get him take care of and, you know, get the truck running the way he uh, expected. Absolutely. And hey, guys, uh, speaking of, of parts that I think everyone's going to love, I know people right now are rushing out and grabbing the 2020 2.8 liter tuning just came out supporting single tune files here at Duramax Tuner. Uh, so if you're a 2.8 owner, you can finally get your truck tuned. No, it's not switch on the fly yet. We are still waiting on EFI Live to have that out. Uh, but Chris, you've come up with some creative ways to help these guys where maybe they can still get all four tunes, but just use their laptop if they need to switch back and forth. So a little bit more laborsome, but hey, still have the availability. Yeah, what's nice is with the new V3 AutoCal that EFI Live came out with, you can load all the files individually on the AutoCal. So you have access to all the files. You don't have to use the laptop moving forward until that is the switchable is available, which then we can update all of our existing customers. <clears throat> That's what I've been informing guys on the 19s and the 20s thus far. So there's some, you know, ability to grow, you know, kind of get into that switchable once it's available. At the same time, not limit yourself now with just one single tune. That's right. And so today is October 23rd, 2020. You currently can buy tuning, uh, EFI Live tuning for your 2022.8 liter. Also, another product just got released for 2020s, but this time for the 6.6 liter Duramaxes. Um, You now can get 60 inch and 68 inch traction bar kits from WC Fab. 
And those really complement the truck's style a great deal. You know, you can get them powder coated in hundreds and hundreds of different colors. Mostly, you know, what's really creative is to get them paint matched to the truck. Or maybe you have some other fixings under the hood from Jason over at WC Fab. And, you know, you have a, a, a complementary color under the hood for your, you know, coolant hose and your intercooler pipes, your maybe your uh, coolant tank reservoir. Well, then you could get your traction bars color matched that way as well. Absolutely, guys. And of course, we assume you know, but just in case you don't, um, the WC Fab traction bars are, are, are designed to eliminate dangerous rear axle housing twist that occurs during hard acceleration on leaf spring equipped trucks. The solid upgrade for high horsepower and heavy towing trucks helps put power on the pavement when you need it and prevent costly damage to U joints, drive shafts, pinion yokes, and axle housings. The kits come, um, I'm sorry, the kits combine high quality poly bushings and greasable, rebuildable Johnny joints for high strength and durability at a quiet, at a quiet and complement to the ride. No irritating hind joint uh, end links, clacks and squeaks. So, and like Chris said, you can get those custom powder coated any way you want. 100% bolt on DIY option is available for crew cab short bed models. And they are of course, 100% made in the USA. Uh, I know we've been talking a lot also about the new Exergy line of uh, fuel system additives. We're excited to get more into those. I think we're going to have to get one of the guys over there on the show to really get into the weeds of what that is and what that'll entail. But Chris, I was just checking out their Facebook page, and it's always a fun place to look. Uh, as I scroll through it, it's just you see competitor after competitor in the winner's circle running Exergy products. Well, I mean, I think there's no secret, you know, any of our loyal listeners to the podcast, anyone that's followed the brand calibrated power Duramax tuner over the years, along with, you know, other brands like, you know, Firepunk, WC Fab, Dirty Hooker Diesel. These are shops that have always chose Exergy performance in competitive, you know, scenarios. Um, if they're going to be good for competition use, I'm sure they're going to be great for the daily driving use. And it's, it's insane to see, in the one of the contests that happened over the this past weekend king of the streets fuel system uh extra fuel system trucks first third and fifth at king of the streets 2020. That's just like crazy. talk about a very nice widespread of, <laughs> of trucks um you know it's just it's really cool to see that extra g still it holds it down for being the premier Comrail fuel system upgrade company in the country. Um, and it's not like, you know, they came out of the woodwork last year to do this. This is something that they have been offering support, quality support for years, you know, so in my opinion, rightfully so, they deserve it. Absolutely correct. Uh, guys, now we're going to jump over to, to an interview that I did with Jay. Uh, he is the senior project manager from Peak. Uh, who actually worked on the Def Blue Platinum. Chris, you run Def in your truck. I run Def in my car. Uh, it, it was amazing to me after or during this conversation how little I actually know about Def. I'm excited. Let's get right to the interview. All right, guys, and now it's time for your favorite part of the show. Calibrated Power presents our special guest, and today we have a very special guest. I have the senior project manager for Blue Def Platinum, Jay Gagnon. Gagnon, just like I was going to pronounce it. How the hell are you, Jay? I'm doing great, Paul. Thanks so much for having me here and speaking to the audience for Diesel Performance Podcast. Absolutely. And Jay is actually in-house. Uh, I had no idea, but you guys are actually somewhat local to us here in northern Illinois. I, I'm working out of my home in Crystal Lake, so it was a <laughs> hop and a jump. But when I got the opportunity to come down here and check out the shop, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I love it. Um now, Jay, I had been talking with the guys over there at Peak, which are the manufacturers of Blue Def Platinum. So everybody who has seen those Peak, I, I think most commonly I think of the engine coolant. Uh, but, of course, also we see all that Blue Def that's all a part of the same company. So you were directly involved on on engineering this new brand of of Def Fluid. I've been the product manager for uh, Blue Def for two years now, and, and from the very beginning, I've been involved in setting up and uh, working on the project for Blue Def Platinum. Awesome. Awesome. So we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about that product, what makes it different, and why our listeners should maybe pay attention if we have emissions equipment on our trucks. But I wanted to start back at the beginning. Jay, I ask all of our guests, 
How did you first get your your start working around automotive performance? You know, I think like a lot of guys, uh, my father brought me into it. When we were six, seven, eight years old, the old man would bring us out in the driveway and say, hold this steering column up for me. Hold this thing so I can put the bolt in. <laughs> so I got into it from a very early age, and, and I enjoyed working with my hands. And I started to pick up the various tasks, how to weld, how to wrench, how to do this and that. So I, I am one of the few, I think, in my type of profession where I'm completely hands-on, and I'll handle welding to construction to bodywork and painting, anything and everything. Because you're an actual gearhead. We were talking before the show, and you actually have some fun projects and some cool vehicles floating around uh, your day-to-day life. Hey, not as cool as the stuff you got out back there, but <laughs> I'm very happy with the things that I'm playing with. Absolutely. Cool, man. Well, hey, let's help our listeners just kind of get a handle on this, because I know, guys, emissions equipment is your number one favorite thing to talk about. Uh, I want to hit the basics for the guys who are brand new to this stuff. What is DEF? Because I don't think the references to calling it hog piss are quite accurate. <laughs> it smells a little like hog piss. <laughs> <laughs> but DEF is a very simple fluid uh, product. It is 67.5% automotive grade urea, a much purer grade of urea than you find in fertilizers and other products. And it's 32.5% deionized water. It's two simple components, but it has to be manufactured to very high standards of purity and quality to work correctly in uh, diesel emission systems. Now, when we talk about purity, um, ure- urea itself can I get bad urea? Because the other mix is just water, isn't it? Well, there are different degrees of quality in the industry. When you go to shop for DEF, you always want to look for the API symbol on the box. That means that the product has been vetted and meets the ISO 2241 standard. So that's your best assurance that you have a quality product and you'll have as few poss- uh, problems as possible with the systems. Okay. Okay, good. So, so it's urea and distilled water, right? Deionized water. I'm sorry, deionized water. Um, so it's these two. Why? What What does it do to my truck besides be one more tank I have to fill up? Well, you know, it goes hand in hand with SCR technology. SCR stands for Selective Catalytic Reduction. And this is all driven by the government's uh, mandate that came into force about 2010 to lower the levels of NOx emissions to clean up the air. When you look at the history of emission systems on trucks, since the 80s, there's probably been about a 98% reduction in emissions. And even over the last 10 years, when SCR and DEF came on the scene, the reduction approaches about 40% now. So this technology, which DEF is now the key component of, has been instrumental in cleaning up the air and the emissions coming out of our vehicles. And, and we're going to dive into just how effective DEF is at, at accomplishing that and maybe talk a little bit about why it was such a great choice. But real quick, I want to run through that SCR system. So, guys, you know, as your truck creates exhaust, it's going to go, the exhaust is going to come out past the turbo and then Depending on what make and manufacturer you have, it's going to hit a few different components at different times. But all of them are going to go through an SCR, a DOC, and a DPF, right? That's correct. Usually the process starts out with EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. The primary benefit of that is it lowers the peak combustion spike temperature, which lowers NOx emissions. Now, too much EGR actually poisons the air that's going into the motor and reduces power and economy. So the manufacturers, um, they are not mandated to use any specific technology. They use the combination of technologies that helps them best and most efficiently and inexpensively meet the government emission standards. And so there has been a direction to dial back the EGR. It then goes to a diesel oxidation catalyst, a diesel particulate filter, and then it goes to a selective catalytic reduction catalyst to do the final purging of the NOx in the exhaust and produce nitrogen and water. Absolutely. So I, I've, I've heard this described in really cool ways before that um, – the EGR is a, a functional, physical way to help reduce NOx as opposed to using DEF and your SCR is a chemical reaction. So it, 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 I've, I've heard it's alleged that it immediately reduces 
NOx within those gases. Can you describe that process a little bit? Is it is it something that because we've seen the SCR location change throughout the exhaust and and it changes on some different manufacturers and makes. So does it matter how hot the gas is? Does it need more time? Like, is it better to have the SCR before the DPF? Like, how does it play into that? Well, historically, the SCR has always been the last link in the chain. And, and that's just because you want to capture the soot, which is what the DPS does first, so that it doesn't plug up the following catalyst. The real benefit of SCR technology is now, instead of poisoning the combustion process through too much exhaust gas into the combustion, you can now treat the emissions post-combustion. So you tune the motor for power and economy, and you take care of the bad gas, the emissions, after the fact. That's the real advantage of SCR technology. And Actually, studies have been done on fuel economy and out-of-pocket expense before the advent of the advanced SCR systems in post. And really, the bottom line is because the motor can be tuned for more power and economy now because there's an SCR system, the net effect for the consumer is they actually spend less even when you combine the cost of DEF and diesel than pre all these technologies when they're only buying diesel because fuel economy has gone up so high. Right. And then these new technologies are the only reason that you're getting 900, 1,000 foot-pounds of torque and you're getting 20-plus miles per gallon. 20 years ago, that that never would have happened. <laughs> Cer- certainly not at an OEM level, right? That's correct. Because I know like when an LB7 came out, we always laugh that that's your 01 to 04 Duramaxes. They were 300 horsepower, and they rocked the world at that level, right? And, and your LB7 guys out there, I know my old LB7 – with a tune on it, sure, I could get 22 miles to the gallon, but straight from the factory, it was garbage. It was in the teens, low teens, um, and I think that's what a lot of guys reported. So that it, that it's a really interesting point that it, I guess one way that a nut job like me could look at it is DEF has actually allowed me higher horsepower levels straight from the OEM. I'll take that. Yeah, exactly true. Again, because you don't have to treat the emissions inside the combustion process, you can treat it afterwards, then you can engineer the combustion process to give you a maximum amount of power economy. You know, there's a lot of parallels between what went on with automobiles. Everybody, rem- uh, well, I remember because I'm an old part. You know, the emission days of the late, mid to late 70s and 80s when cars were really suffering. All these smog technologies were new, uh, catalytic converters were new, and they were choking off the power. I mean, Trans Am Firework, 464 is putting out 210 horsepower. Oh my God, that's (laughs) terrible, right? But it's been an evolution and the technology improved with automobiles to where uh, my turbo Mustang four-cylinder gets 300 horsepower and I can get 37 miles per gallon if I keep my foot out of it. All of that advanced technology, what used to be in the 60s, balanced and blueprinted and ultra high performance stuff that you did extra, that's all coming directly out of the factory now. And more and more of these ultra high performance technologies are translating into the diesel um, technology, diesel engine design. And, And that's why also you're getting more and more horsepower, more and more economy. I love that. I love that because it is something that we've talked about a lot here on the show with uh, there's there's really only two things that drive OEMs to give us higher levels of horsepower, high, higher levels of performance, diesel, gas, whatever, and that's emissions and consumer demand. Those are the only two levers that you could pull to get more horsepower from the factory. Um, and, and the consumer demand we know is there. It's always feel like it's literally always been there. Um, and those emission standards sometimes – while I also am not a fan of having a bunch of extra stuff on my truck, trust me, I get it. It is it is nice to see that there are some fringe benefits to doing this and that it has allowed us to continue to go forward. DEF, I know, is something that probably gets a bad rap because I think a lot of guys don't know what DEF is. I don't think a lot of guys know what an SCR is. Uh, I think what a lot of guys know is I want it to go away. I, I don't want to do it. I didn't have to do it in the old days. Why do I have to do it now? Do you think that there's technology out there that that would supersede DEF? Like, is there another way they could do it? Could they go back to bigger EGRs? 
you know, I'm not privy to what the OEs are working on, so I'm sure there's probably somebody trying to crack the code to where they can take systems off and not have to include another fluid or not. But really, everything we've seen so far is just a further enhancement of the technology that's in place. Just as automobiles went from one catalytic converter underneath to now you've got pre-cats right off and sometimes integral with the exhaust manifold, so they heat up faster, they light up faster, they start working sooner, you're going to start to see that in diesel engine technology too. Because the one hang-up with a diesel exhaust system or an SER system is operating temperature. Um, Some people have problems with uh, DPFs clogging or SCR deposit buildup because there's too much stop and go. There's too much slow speed operation of the vehicle, so the system doesn't reach optimum temperature. And it takes that optimum temperature for all the catalysts to work as efficiently as possible and clean and react chemically with the def that's injected as possible uh, to produce exactly what we want, nitrogen and water out of the tailpipe. It's so interesting you say that when I think back to uh, the new Duramaxes and the new Cummins next to each other and how they've been modifying their emission systems over over the generations. <clears throat> Uh, with the L5P, what we saw is in 2017, they GM moved that DOC literally to the turbo. So the, the as the turbo comes out, like the exhaust, the first thing it hits is the DOC to, to heat the exhaust. Uh, and, and at the time, we thought, what a crazy design. But there it is, just like you're describing. There, we know these systems are so temperature sensitive. And we know that a lot of guys out there who do things like let and sit their trucks idle for 10 hours at a time, um, that you know, do stop and go traffic all day. We've seen the results of what happens to your emissions equipment when you're doing that. So it is interesting to kind of think of the gas world and those parallels to back in the 70s when they first started having to deal with it. And now the ridiculous horsepower numbers they can put out in supercars and, and high-end you know models and, and things like that, uh, where we can get crazy numbers and high levels of reliability. I think most diesel guys would agree, we love our trucks. We hate taking our truck to anybody to work on it, right? <laughs> like, like that means something went wrong. I want to avoid that. And one of the things I know guys deal with are NOx sensors. Uh, so if we're talking about DEF and we're talking about NOx sensors, I think there has to be a conversation there. Um, do you have any suspicions during your guys' testing and engineering? Did you guys deal with problems with NOx sensors as well? You know, we had to do a lot of research to evaluate what was going on in the diesel market to see if there was a capability for a breakthrough product like Blue Def Platinum. And quite frankly, some people were seeing a lot of sensor problems. I, I won't name brands, but it seemed to be uh, some brands were more uh, troublesome than others. Some were very bulletproof and some always seem to have problems. I've talked to fleet managers, and it was just depressing, the numbers they were reporting. Yeah. But it, it's like anything. The technology continues to improve. The OEs don't want warranty problems. They don't want customer satisfaction problems. So they continue to perfect their systems, and it, it is getting better and better. Will mechanical problems, sensor problems completely go away? I doubt it because that's just the nature of the mechanical beast. But everything is getting better and better. Systems are getting more and more efficient. But, you know, just uh, other week or so, I was reading an industry article that cylinder deactivation, which has been in the automotive market for years now, that is coming to diesel engine technology. And what is driving that? Fuel economy and emission regulations. Without those two drivers, we wouldn't be seeing these um, huge incremental improvements in technology going into our vehicles. It's so funny you reference that while we're talking about emissions because I always flash back to the Cadillac 468, <laughs> <laughs> which everybody chuckles the same way whenever yeah. you say that that yeah. that car name because they're like, oh, yeah, they, they all got brought in and, and four of those cylinders welded shut. It turned out to be the 444. Um, and then now I want to say like early 2000s, they, uh, Dodge started bringing it back, I think, first with, with their uh, Charger when that hit the market and they started bringing displacement on demand. And now we're seeing it. It's it's auto manufacturer why that if you have a v8 you probably also have cylinder deactivation or displacement on demand uh some sort of system that shuts down how many cylinders you're using because i think that's one of the other things is electronic controls have given us the ability that we have that as an option to where we can make that reliable right and you guys are seeing the same things on the emissions equipment side i know here at the shop we are recording 
much, much higher levels of reliability the newer the model year the truck is. So if you have a 2007 and a half to 2010, you probably have some sort of emissions equipment issues. Like it's now 2020, like all of those trucks probably have some sort of emissions equipment issue. But every model year we've seen, we're seeing what you're talking about. We've seen that trucks are getting better and better and better. Are they perfect? No, I don't think they ever will be. That's why tuners and, and shops like ours will always be open, right? Hey, I'll just bring one parallel back to automobiles again. I, I remember way back in the day when I was an ASC aut- automotive certified mechanic and front wheel drive started to really get um, popular. We were replacing CV boots all the time. The things were always breaking and you replaced a boot instead of replacing a shaft. And I can't remember the last time any of my cars, I've gone 200 plus thousand miles on some of these things, never replaced a CV boot. So yeah. it's, it's another one of those things where the technology comes out and it gradually improves, improves, and eventually it gets bulletproof. And the same thing is happening with diesel emission technology. Absolutely, man. God, it, that makes me so excited. I'm always, I'm always looking at the new models, and like we just caught some spy photos on some of the websites about what the new 2021 Duramaxes look like. They may have finally updated their interiors. Uh, the 2020 Ford, we just drove that in one of our towing series. God, that's a cool truck. Nobody tell Tim I said that. Uh, and then, of course, the 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 staple, the Cummins, it's always been the workhorse of the diesel. It's phenomenal. It, it, it's hard to beat that Cummins. It, it really is. So just to think that, you know, a thousand foot pounds of torque from the factory. Now the Ford's at 1050 rated numbers. Um, if they could do it at half the price, I might be interested in buying a new truck. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth of it all? Yeah. Isn't that the truth of it all? Um, okay. A, a couple things about death. I uh, drive a, a smaller diesel. Uh, so I almost never put DEF in during the summer. And then in the winter, I'll have to fill up my tank three times. Now, it's, it's it has its own basket case. Um, but I always come back, and I I never use a full, what are they, two-and-a-half-gallon square tubs. I always It's like 1.75. So I always have this little leftover DEF. How long is it good? How do I know my DEF has gone bad? Well, DEF is a trouble-free fluid. As long as you store it properly, and when we say that, we mean – you don't keep it exposed to direct sunlight. You maintain it in a temperature-controlled room. I mean, it could be a garage. It doesn't have to be clean. But for two years of shelf life, it needs to be stored within 23 to 86 degrees. When you store it in a much higher environment, that's when the shelf life goes down. It doesn't typically go bad from sitting unless maybe you left the cap loose and a contaminant got in. Okay. Usually, if, if you... If you notice that your def is discolored, it has any kind of hue to it, if it's hazy, that's a sign that it's not pure anymore and you shouldn't put it in your system. Because that's the number one thing that causes problems with the emission systems, the def emission system, is putting some type of, of contaminant in. You know, the, the field caps are all blue now. That's so that idiots like myself don't mistake it for the diesel cap, right? <laughs> so people put the wrong thing in there, whether it's def in the diesel tank or diesel in the def tank, and it just gums up the whole works. And maybe you can get lucky and you just clean it out with fresh def or deionized water or maybe you have to start replacing stuff and if you have to replace stuff it's really really expensive well when i'm out of washer fluid i've thrown a, a bottle of water in there and it was fine so def's pretty much the same thing right well you know i did that <laughs> with the green bug wash one year and then the first freeze came in and i had a block of ice and i had to pull it out of the truck and, <laughs> and thaw it out so you know I, I don't do that stuff anymore now, now, Jay, uh, as we said at the beginning, you, you were directly involved and maybe even responsible uh, for this new Def Blue Platinum. Now, I think everybody immediately recognizes Def Blue, the box. We've all seen it. We all know what it looks like. We all know what it is. Most of us have used it in our truck. Um, you, you had referenced it, the, the Blue Platinum, as, as a break th- breakthrough or breakout technology. What's new about it? What's different? I mean, it's all just urea and deionized water, right? Except that platinum has a um, proprietary additive agreement. It's called Advanced System Shield Technology. And and this is what separates it from regular DEF. You know, the industry consumers tend to think DEF is DEF and DEF is DEF, and I'll buy on price. There, there are higher... Um, 
manufacturing standards that some manufacturers have. As I said before, the API symbol is always a good indicator that you're buying quality brand. But even then, um, some manufacturers and Old World takes great pride in going above and beyond in the filtration process for our deionized water and our re urea and our end product. And plus, we batch test everything before it goes out to the retailer. So every uh, shipment of DEF is tested to make sure it meets our standards of purity. There'll be a number on the box, and it can be in different places on the box, but that's our stamp of approval that this product is assured to be trouble-free and pure when you get it. Um, but Platinum, with this uh, proprietary advanced system shield technology, makes DEF a better DEF. What it does, it helps DEF um, work better in the heat of the exhaust system to react more cleanly and more completely and therefore reduce the buildup of deposits in the, on the injector, post the injector, on the front of the SCR system. Um, if, even on a small car like yours, uh, one of the uh, guys in the office, his, his sister has a diesel cruise, and she's been in and out of the dealership multiple times because she gets this buildup in her exhaust system, and it's not soot. It is a white-type polymer-type material, which is a byproduct of the urea not burning completely. And it's due because she just drives around town, stop and go, never really gets up to freeway speed for any prolonged period of time, so the system never reaches optima operating conditions. Blue Def Platinum is designed and developed specifically to help people in those less than optimal operating positions to reduce the build of, of that deposit. Because once that stuff starts to build up, if it's light, then the regeneration process can burn some of it out. But often it can build up to the point where a regen won't burn it out. And so you either have to scrape it out or you have to replace the parts. It, it's kind of like uh, many years ago, exhaust pipes were double walled. Yeah. And when the inner wall rusted through and collapsed, it was like sticking a banana up the tailpipe. <laughs> you know, choked off the engine. The engine, it, 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 instead of having a two-inch diameter pipe to push exhaust through, th through it's got a one-inch diameter pipe. And that forced the engine to work harder. Working harder meant you were producing less power. It means you were losing fuel economy. By adding advanced system shield technology, we're able to reduce the buildup of those deposits. And we state it very clearly on our package. If you haven't seen it, look for the gray and black and blue box right next to your regular Blue Def brand. And you'll see a description of the SCR system. And you'll see, we call it very clearly, maintains optimum fuel economy, saves money on costly repairs, and sustains the life of your SCR system. We, we put a lot of time and a lot of money into testing to verify that our formula works. And so you can be assured that if you use Blue Def Platinum with Advanced System Shield technology consistently, you'll go a long way towards reducing the bill of those deposits and you'll suffer less of those types of problems. You know, that's really interesting. I think we've all seen that crystallized looking DEF before. I know, God knows, I've never put DEF in my car without spilling a bunch around it. So every time I go back to do it the next time or pop my hood up, I always look down and I'm like, oh, here's that big messer. I've even spilled it on my coat before. And, that, and then my coat has that like white crystallized looking thing to it um so blue def I, I just want to recap this to make sure that i got this really clear so so blue def is your standard def that's just your your urea and your deionized water uh blue def platinum has some extra chemicals in it that's I could correct say. Some, some proprietary blend of chemicals uh so it's got its own cocktail in it to help def burn more efficiently so so when i'm thinking about this i'm thinking about that residue in that deposit I've seen pictures of guys who go to open up their emission system because there's a failure, and it is packed with, like, that cake, right? That, like, white, powdery, crystallized kind of cake in there. Yep. Um, and, and, yeah, I mean, we've all we've all just said, oh, bad, bad def injector, write it off, move on, right? Replace your def injector, scrape it out, clean the system, call it a day. But then we see that truck have that problem again, and then we see that truck have that problem again and again and again. Um, somebody who's going through a lot of those problems – this is going to help. This is this is something that's going to push them into the right direction. It might not fix all of your emissions equipment woes, but Blue Def Platinum is something you would recommend to that guy going through that issue. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, now, I'll be clear. 
it does not clean out the existing residue. If you've got a, a big wad of that white plastic in your exhaust, Blue Diff Platinum is not going to flush it out. It is not a system flush. What it does, it prevents that deposit from growing from the very beginning. And if you're not having problems now and you want to make sure you never have problems, you can still use it. If you use it from day one, then you go a long way from ever having that problem again. Um, our fleet testing has realized fewer regens overall on the Class 8 vehicles. Um, and pretty soon after we get more miles under our belt, we'll be able to publish all, all the different uh, materials and facts behind it. But it has been thoroughly vetted. Um, it's been proven to perform, and it will work for any consumer, and especially those that are having problems. It would be a good step up for them. That's so cool. I'm glad you brought this up because I wanted to ask you about testing because from a consumer standpoint – there's a lot of fluids, a lot of additives, and a lot of marketing around those two topics. Uh, when I walk through even like an auto zone, there's billboards everywhere telling me that everybody's is the best. Pick pick a product, right? Um, what does testing look like for DEF fluid? I mean, do you just put it in, like you said, fleet vehicles and check back in, in 100,000 miles? Like, how'd it go, guys? Well, you know, we have our own laboratory old world over in Northbrook. So, and that's where we do our batch testing to assure that what is being produced meets our quality standards. So, there are different chemical processes, and, and I'm not a chemist, so I'm, I can't speak to it at that level, but there are different chemistry tests you can do. There are different uh, refractory mechanisms you can buy or pH papers to validate that your product is, is good. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, okay, one last thing. We are in northern Illinois. I was looking over freezing point. 12 degrees. Uh, that's better than water, but man, it drops down below 12 degrees in Chicago for sure. Uh, so if you're in northern Illinois through winter, it's going to get cold outside. Where do I get concerned about my duff tank freezing and, and, and having that type of catastrophic issue to deal with? No, you really don't have to worry about it because the OEs have spec their tanks such that there's enough expansion that if the duff freezes, it's not going to shatter anything. Um, and there are heaters in most vehicles. There have been for a while, and I think it's pretty uniform now. And the vehicle can tell if the DEF is frozen, and it will not even try to inject DEF until it is in a liquid format. The, the computers, just as they put them on the fuel injection and the ignition and all these other things, there are computers that control um, – what the NOx sensor is reading before the catalyst and after the catalyst, and they inject, they adjust the flow of the DEF injection or whether to even turn on the DEF ejector. Now, the great thing about DEF is that it can freeze, but as soon as it thaws, it's just as good as it was before it froze. So you don't have a degradation in your DEF performance just because it happened to freeze. That was literally my next question. That's awesome because we, we have. I mean, I know I've had – my vehicle um, have problems and see it's frozen and like it's okay pull the tank let it thaw and pour all of this out and then we'll reinstall the tank and put all new def in the system because i was so scared of the 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 build up right i was so scared of oh my god it turned into a solid it's definitely going to have a problem all the way through the system but you're saying no once it comes back it's back you're good that's correct just move on that's yep. interesting yep. um what should I have asked you today that we haven't talked about yet? Where can you get Blue Def? <laughs> you know, Listen, and, if you're listening to this show and you don't know where to buy Def, turn the episode off. No, well, just kidding. Go ahead. You know, and I, I think it's really key and, and why people should place a, a lot of faith in what I'm telling them. You can't go to an auto parts store or a major retailer hardware store and not see Blue Def. Without fail, we are always the brand on the shelf, even at the major truck stops. There is always blue depth there. And there's a reason for that. It's because we have invested a lot in our manufacturing processes and our quality testing processes and our quality assurance processes to make sure that the depth you get from us is the best depth you can get. Um, and you're going to see now, it's taken a little while in some area of the country for a rollout to get up to speed, but you are going to see more and more in all these same locations right next to Blue Def. You're going to see Blue Def Platinum with Advanced System Shield Technology. 
All right, guys. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to try it in my car, and we'll be reporting back if it turns my check engine lights off. I'm just kidding. Uh, Jay, thank you so much for joining us today, man. I really appreciate you taking out the time to talk to our listeners. Guys, I think this has been super interesting and extremely informative. Give me some feedback. Jump on to Fans of Diesel Performance Podcast Facebook group, if that title's not long enough, nothing is. Uh, And let us know what you think, man. We want to hear what you have to say. Any final thoughts from you, Jay? Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy your diesel trucks. Push the OEs for more, and you will get more, and Blue Def will be there to support you. Thank you so much, Paul, for having me here and speaking to your Diesel Performance Podcast audience today. Not a problem. Guys, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again soon. That's a terrible one, Justin. Don't use that. Let's try that again.